What's good? What's good? What's good? So I've been getting a lot of questions about my Ableton workflow. So today I'm going to go over 10 tips for a quicker Ableton workflow. I've learned these over the past several years of using the program, so I'm happy to share them. Basically, the quicker you can get your ideas out, the more ideas you can make and the better your writing process will be. So the whole idea is to use the program as quickly as you can. So these Ableton tips are either going to be tactical for your speed and general workflow, or they'll be creative doing things like reversing and pitching things really quickly. So if any of that interests you, let's dive right in. First things first, you can create your own shortcuts, which is very handy. You can see right here in my default template, my shortcuts here are to record. I just hit R. It's just so much quicker. So you do control K just to pop up all of your key commands and then click on what you want. So I wanted record to be R. So you hit R to finalize it. You do command K again. And then now you can see instead of having to go up here and press R, I just press R. It, it starts recording automatically. Uh, so you can see here, I also have my metronome on one. So every time I press one, it just goes on. And then also to set a marker, I have it set as two. See here, I'm just pressing one, click on, click off, and then two, set a marker. And for me, that's basically all the key commands that I need that I use all the time that I need quickly. So two will be all of the shortcuts. If you want, you can pause the screen for a few seconds here while I show you the shortcuts that I use the most often. But a lot of people are asking about how to get the least delay. In my experience, there's always going to be a little bit of a delay, unfortunately. The best thing you can do is go into options here and then you click reduce latency when monitoring. And then you can go into your preferences. To do that quickly, you can do control comma and that will pop up the preferences. You want to make sure your buffer size is something around 128 while recording and higher when you're mixing and when you start hearing audio glitches. If you're recording guitars and you're using like an amp sim to monitor, I monitor in UAD just so that I don't have to hear the latency. I know it's there, but I don't have to hear it. Say you have your amp sim on your record track as well. What I've been finding recently is make another track that has the same input. So two, put the amp tone on a separate track and then record on a muted one. Cause I've been noticing if you record on the same track you're monitoring, you get even more latency. But if you're monitoring on say your amp tone one, but you're recording on your record track, it's, it's a little bit better. Take lanes are new to Ableton 11 and they're very handy. I'll show you a quick example with a guitar. You right click and you go down to show take lanes here and then I'll record one take. And then I'll do another one. And you can see as I recorded each one, it created a new track within here. And these are take lanes. So with take lanes, if you want to hear the performances you just did, highlight the one by clicking on it and then press T. That way you're hearing only that. You have to make sure that the record track is enabled though. So I can hear it like that. And then if I want to hear the next one, I go and press T. I'll turn this off and say I wanted to use the first half from the second take. I just use my pencil tool and I highlight it and it'll just drag it up. And then say I wanted to use the second half of the first take. Again, I use the pencil tool by pressing B to activate it and I will highlight it. And then you see it adds to the comp up there. So now let's listen to our ideal take. So that's just both parts comp together very easily. That's the whole thing with take lanes. In Ableton 10 and before you had to kind of just like continuously record over and then drag what you wanted or make some dummy tracks and drag them onto the dummy tracks and then make a master comp. So say when I'm recording metal guitars, I'll record a bunch of takes and then I'll choose the ones that sound the most in tune. If you're interested, I have the whole video here on how I record metal guitars professionally in Ableton. This is what I use for all of my projects. So this next tip is when it comes to recording live drums and editing them. So now I have a drum session open here. It's sloppy because I play the drums. So now I'm going to edit them and show you my workflow in Ableton 11 and the way that I used to do things in Ableton 10 and before that. You see how I'm grabbing just the kick and only the kicks getting highlighted. You highlight all the tracks that you want to be in one selection right click them and go to link tracks and that way anything that i do to one of them will happen to all of them so you can see here if i fade it does it to all of them if i do a cut it does it to all of them i'm the type of guy that always manually edits my drums i find that if you use like the computer tools to do the whole thing you have to listen to the drums anyways and fix little mistakes if you do it manually you know that it's 100 percent correct and when you listen back 
there might be one thing you have to fix or none, as opposed to when you're using the computer-based ones like automation and quantizing, it just doesn't do it quite right, or it stretches in and you leave really weird art artifacts. I'll just loop this, and then I'll mute this. Zero to mute everything. And then I see this first kick is off, so in Ableton 11, since it's all linked, I find the quickest way to do this is to highlight everything and then just press arrow key to the right if you know you're gonna go 100% to grid, and then just drag it out. This one's a little bit off, so I'll go like this, and get it close, and then go like that. I just find it way more accurate to manually do it. You actually, although it takes a while, I find it quicker than having to go back and fix the computer's mistakes. So that's how I would do it in Ableton 11 with the link tracks. I'll show you for the rest of this section how I would do it in Ableton 10. So as you've seen, when you're highlighting the kick track, it does it to all of it when it's linked, but in Ableton 10, it didn't have that. So we unlink tracks. And again, I'm grabbing the kick, but it's not grabbing everything. The workaround with this, with Ableton 10 and earlier, if you grab the group and you highlight the group, it'll grab all of that. For this section, it's a little bit early. It's weirder when it's earlier. So I'll kind of just delete a little bit. Backspace, hold shift, grab the thing to the right. Let go of shift because it'll change the speed otherwise. And then move it to the right. And then, yeah, it's just like, a, it's just so much easier in Ableton 11 because of the link tracks. Like going up to the top, it was doable. And I still preferred it over the computer-based time adjustments, but it just takes a lot longer. So again, those two features are in Ableton 11 only, and I would say are definitely worth the upgrade. It saves you a lot of time and just a lot of hassle. And so now we have the edited comp. So the next one is the quick quantizing options that we have. It's similar if you use Pro Tools to Beat Detective. So I'll show you this example with a piano part. I'll try to keep it percussive so you can see the difference more obviously. So you can see it's a little bit off time here. Click the selection. If it's not showing up down here, all you got to do is double click. And then your waveform will show up here. Click down in the waveform, hit Command or Control A and then hit control U. And that will move it over to wherever you have these little markings marked. It'll move it over to the nearest grid. So you can see it's still in a weird timing. So our best practice here, I'm just doing control two and control one. So I'll make the grid bigger so that when I make these moves, it pushes it onto the actual beat instead of like a 64th note. Well, if you want, you can add or move these arrangements afterwards. Say I wanted to move that, I can drag this here and and just go crazy. Sometimes if it's like a melody thing, it's better to do complex or complex pro just because beats will get glitchy. The next cool thing is just a quick reverse. What you want to do is you want to hit caps lock and then hit R and whatever selected will be reversed quickly. So cool. Say I wanted it twice as fast, I'll hold shift and then I'll drag this here. But then again, it's better in complex. So shift, drag halfway. It's the same thing as clicking down here to speed it up. But you don't have to go down here. You can just hold shift and drag it. So yeah, this next tip I normally use with lead guitars. So let me record something real quick and I'll show you. If you hold Alt and the left or right arrow keys, it'll move them over in small increments instead of going a full grid amount. So now that we have it recorded and dragged down, what you want to do, this is using the algorithms in Ableton in a creative way, but incorrectly. So normally with like melodic things, they suggest to use complex or complex pro. I find that when I use beats, you can do really strange things. So I take this lead. By holding shift and arrow up, I can raise the entire pitch up one octave. So you can see down here, I click here, pitch up. And you'll hear it starts to get glitchy when you're going up in beats. Whatever is highlighted, if you press S, it will solo it. 
not only is it cool because it's an octave up, but it's also adding that glitchiness. And if you go one more octave up, super cool. And same thing with the octave down. So let's go a full octave down. It's not quite as cool. I find the octave up is really sweet. So sometimes I'll purposely record something an octave lower than it should be if I think I'm gonna do this kind of effect. And it glitches a bit more, but doesn't go like psycho high. The next awesome section in Ableton is, re it's called resampling. So basically you wanna make a new track, we'll do control T right below that. I'm gonna go into the input here and I'm gonna go to resample and then I'm gonna press the record button. Whatever is playing, it will record. So if I'm playing the whole track, it'll record everything that I was playing, the drums and the guitar. And then it gets processed in whatever your group is. If you make a resample track and then you solo whatever it is that you wanna resample and then record it. Now you no longer have to keep this track or you can put something else on. So if you're strapped for space and your CPU is going crazy or you don't have enough DSP, a good thing to do is to resample your track. And that way, for one, you can mess with it more and there's no taxing because say I was running an amp sim from this lead track here, which I am, there's three plugins. I now have that sound printed and you can do it in Pro Tools, but not as easy as quickly making a new track, hitting a resample, solo your thing, record, and it's done. So Ableton Live has a really cool sampler built in. You can drag in a drum track, an 808 that you wanna sample, or a whole sample. So I'm gonna do Shift, Control, T, on Windows at least, and it makes a new MIDI track right here. So now we're gonna go up here into Instruments and go Simpler. If you double click any plugin or anything, it's gonna go onto whatever track is highlighted. I see a lot of times, People will take this and drag it onto whatever track they're going for. That's cool, but if you already have it highlighted, just double click, it's quicker and it's less annoying. You don't have to be precise about it. So I'm gonna take this resample thing that we just did, that guitar lead right here. Have the sampler open and then take your sample of whatever you wanna do and drag it in here. And you'll see when you have the MIDI selection on, to activate your MIDI keyboard, your built-in MIDI keyboard, just press M and then you're gonna use your keyboard as your keyboard, so. It's crazy. So yeah, say I want that to be a loop, I just. And then you go through here and you set your release and everything. That's how you get truly unique samples that nobody else has. You record something and then once you sample it, you can add effects and stuff like that and make it so literally nobody has it. This one is really cool, the splice. So it basically cuts their sample up into parts. When you're using your MIDI keyboard to move up and down octaves, press Z to go down an octave and X to go up. So now if I hit a note, it'll play the section. And then if I want to add more splices and make the samples shorter, let's add in a bunch here. I don't know what these are gonna sound like, by the way, but we'll see. I'm sure every DAW has something like that, but Ableton is just like next level with everything that they do. So thanks for watching today's episode. Given the information that we went over today, if you want to learn how to professionally record guitars from home using Ableton, I've made a video on it, which is linked right here. You're going to want to watch that. And if you found any use or any value in this, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. See ya.